All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio tonight. Uh, so tonight, being in California and with it being close to spring, we get lots of poppies that come out. So I thought I would paint some poppies. Uh, here's the picture I'm using as my basis. It's not going to end up looking exactly like that, but it will be somewhat similar. Uh, let me set this off to the side. I'm going to be using my Pro Art. Uh, paper 12 by 16 inches 140 pound uh, wood pulp paper let me open this up I've got it drawn out pre-drawn right here we're gonna get to that I I've really started to like this uh, bigger paper bigger formats than the ones I've been drawing on uh, painting on so much it's just nicer to have a little bit more room the more I'm painting on big paper the more I'm liking it uh, so that's very nice. I'm gonna be using my. Oh, I got a leak in here. I've been. I'm gonna use my uh, limited colors palette. Uh, the colors I've got here, from left to right: cobalt blue, French ultramarine, cobalt green, Hooker's green, Aurelian, Cad yellow, pale, Alizarin crimson, quinacridone red, then raw and burnt umber, Payne's gray, and. Neutral tint. I'll put those over there and you'll be able to see over here uh, My mixing I'm gonna be using primarily my da Vinci squirrel paint brushes and uh, I don't know it's been quite a while since I've painted uh, any kind of Poppy several years probably uh, four or five years, but I'm gonna jump in and Give it a go and see how how it goes. Um, I've got a little green in my brush here it looks like uh, but that's not gonna stop me I'm gonna just put a little bit of cobalt blue up here very light in the sky and I'm just gonna put that on just in some kind of whatever random crazy pattern if I get a little too much blue in somewhere or a little darker blue in somewhere a little that's okay a little lighter blue somewhere that's okay too I'm not gonna worry about it too too much I'm gonna be using a mixture of my alizarin crimson and some of this quinacridone red probably with a little uh, cad yellow to get the right color of reddish orange that I want for my flowers. That looks pretty good right there. And I'm just going to start by dropping in some color uh, to these bigger flowers. Not in any real shape. I, I have them drawn out a little bit, but not too finely. I want the paint to determine somewhat where these flowers are going to be. There we go, and I think that's pretty good for those three main flowers that I have here. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of a greenish color, a light greenish. Oh, this looks good enough to me, a nice yellowish green, and we can see in my reference photo here that green goes up plenty high on this paper so that if we the background green anyways so that if we um, I don't know, miss a little bit or shoot too high or too low we don't have too much to worry about and this is our first layer anyways we're gonna be going over top of this and when this dries it should dry pretty light we'll see how it goes let's get some connecting in there so we'll connect all of this nice colors together I'm doing this a little bit drier than I normally would I'm trying harder to uh, control the amount of water that I'm using and because I'm doing it about drier you can tell my brush is uh, bending and staying bent a little bit more than normal. As soon as you get it wet, then it kind of stands out 
like that a little bit. But I just want to drop some colors in here, maybe a little bit of this warmer in here. And you know what? We do have a few of these uh, flowers back in the back here somewhere. There's a few. Just drop some color in. These will be way in the back, back there as they dry. There we go, there's a flower right there. All right, there we go. I think that's a good start. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here using a limited water. These are almost dry already. So while I wait for that, I'm going to mix up a nice puddle of an orangish ready mixture. And again, this is alizarin crimson, this one right here mostly, and a cad yellow pale. Right, and that's going to get me a nice orange color. Uh, and then if I want to vary it a little bit, I can just dip into that quinacridone red and vary that just a little bit. Now, as I come back in here, I need to think about the uh, petals that I'm going to be painting and what they might look like. I'm going to start with this one. It's kind of in the back, back here. There's one right there, and I'm hoping this is uh, really hoping this is going to work out. I think it'll be okay in the long run. Here's one. I'm trying not to be too super precise. These um, petals do kind of have a rough edge on them. And this one is bled in a little bit. I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to let it bleed in there just a little bit. Let's see. This one comes over something like this. And I'm just trying to get in a little bit of color at the moment. You know what I'm going to do? Before I do anything else, I'm going to get a bit darker, just a wee bit darker of this color. I'm going to touch it right in at the edge here. Hopefully, that's going to strengthen that. And when I come back with the next color right over top of this, it, uh, or right next to it, I mean, come with the next color right next to it, it will look like this is just a wee bit behind it. There we go. And I'm just doing this with just a, just a touch of neutral tint. Uh, this one here, I'm going to put it right in the center because eh, poppies lots of times have that black center on them. There we go. And I'm just, I'm going to let the paint do what it wants to do on those. I'm going to try and keep my paint nice and bright. So every time I dip into that, um, neutral tint. I'm going to make sure I clean my brush really well so that I don't get any additional of that neutral tint color back into, into here, into my main um, puddle of colors. Let's see, I'm going to do this. There we go. And that's going to run about, that's looking really nice up there. I'm, I'm happy with that. So I clean my brush really well back into my mixture of loser and crimson and cad yellow. Let's see, this petal comes up, I don't know, something like that, I think. There we go. That's really nice. Well, you know what? Before I clean this off too much, I can do this, uh, this one opposite over here. There we go. I just don't want, I don't want to touch side side with these really because I don't want to lose um, the edges, the side edges. I want those to harden up just a little bit. I'm going to dip a little bit of that black right into the center of that flower. And let's see, I'm looking around at the side here. That's still a little bit too wet. I don't want to go back into that, but what I can do Let's take a little green. I'm going to use a little bit of 
Aurelian and uh, Cobalt Green here. And you know what I'm going to do with my Aurelian and Cobalt Green? I'm going to change brushes. So I'm going to make a couple of lines. So I'm still working with my uh, Da Vinci Petite Gris uh, brushes, my uh, uh, squirrel hair. That's the word I'm trying to find, squirrel hair brushes. But what I'm going to do is... Do a little bit of these buds that are out here. There we go. Something like that. My line got a little wavy there, but I'm not going to worry about that. My hand sometimes does get a little wavy. This one got a little bit fat. Again, I'm not going to. I'm going to. I'm not going to let it worry me. Somehow I'm going to have faith that it's all going to work out. This one, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little bit of our orange in this one. That one's just starting to open. I just decided. And you know what? This one too, over here. Just a little bit right in the end of it. There we go. That one's just starting to open. I'm trying to be very gentle here there's one there's one where do I have another one right here I can tell you this one needs a little bit of our color right in the center look at that that looks great I, just, I do better I do better with this pulling away from me Pulling up from the bottom, I think I do a lot better like that. Are right, those all the main ones I have? I think those are all the main ones I've got of those for now. I'm going to mix back in my color here. Whoa, I got a nice puddle of it going now. And with that, I'm going to put in another petal. Let's see, this one kind of is behind also. There it is. Comes right down to the center. And I'm going to do one on this side, that same, maybe just a tiny bit different color. I think this one comes over like that. I've lost a little bit of my edges in there, or my pencil, not my edges, my pencil line. So it's a bit hard to, you know what, I'm going to use two brushes here. This will work out great. I've already done my green, basically. I'm just going to mix up a little bit of my neutral tint and alizarin crimson. Maybe a touch of our uh, cad yellow to pale that up just a little bit. There we go. And around here, that'll put that... Back in front just a bit. I like that. I like that. It's maybe got a little too orange, but we can deal with that. See, I've got a petal over here. And no, I'm not being super precise. I started out by saying I wasn't going to be super precise on this painting. I don't want it to be... Uh, an exact photo replica of a a poppy. I want it to be a poppy inspired, but not a poppy copy. I don't do poppy copy. I don't do copies of anything. If you've seen uh, my paintings in the past, uh, but I do try to take inspiration from a lot of things and use that as a base for a painting and then branch off from there and try to make everything else about that painting my own. And I feel like that's what I'm doing here. Let's see, this comes over here and then you can see that uh, in the background, as I've been doing this, the paint in the background has dried a really nice 
soft color. Whether you've noticed it or not, it's dried a really nice soft color and uh, really starting to look nice back there. It's just everything just dropping, fading into the background really wonderfully. Plus I've used that whole puddle up already. Wow. I am mixing this a little bit thicker, I guess, than maybe I normally would. But that's okay. I've, and I've loaded my brush up here. Just trying to, there we go. Trying to get that little bit on there. And again, a little bit, we don't need to make that too dark. There we go. And we're just going to keep going right on around. Oh, the two brush method here. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. This two brush method is great. Let's see here. This petal comes down and around all the way down here. That is a big petal right there. A little bit of our color in the center of this one. I can put just a little here and there to give it a little bit of feel to it. I feel like I've come over just a little too far. I can dab that off just ever so slightly. How are we doing here? Uh, where do I want to go to next? That's wet, that's wet, that's wet, that's wet. I can't do any of those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my smaller brush and I'm going to darken up a little bit of my green. Let's see if I mix a little bit of cobalt and uh, blue and maybe a little bit of ultramarine. I'll still keep maybe the same temperature of blue, but allow for a little bit of a shadow or a darker side. There we go, and a few of these where it's underneath that shadow, it does extend onto the stem as well as on that uh, bulb, bulb, a bulb with bloom, uh, <laughs> the ball, whatever it's called. I don't know. I never ever thought it would be so hard to paint and think at once in my life until I started to do it. And I could know everything. I turn on the camera and pick up a paintbrush <laughs> and seemingly I've forgotten how to speak. I don't I don't know how that happens. I just know that it happens. Sometimes with funny consequences, and sometimes with pretty drastic consequences. Um, I guess as long as I can continue to laugh at myself, which I do quite often, then I'm doing okay. Let's see, here's a petal right here. It's a good looking petal, and a little bit of our color in here maybe a little bit more there we go right on the inside that's going to turn out really nicely i like that i like that how are we doing over there i think we can paint this one in There we go, that's not too bad at all. A little bit of that color in the center here. A nice black bit. Just put a little bit on there for texture. What? We don't have a whole lot left here, do we? You got one over here. That comes out and behind. Something like that. 
a little over there. Now we do have put in, you know what, I want a little bit more on these. Man, I didn't get a color off of this one. Let's, let's come back here with a little, I'm going to put just a little bit of Payne's Gray on this to darken this up a little bit. Payne's Gray is more blue tint. The um, neutral tint that I have is much more of a purple tint, and so I don't want to uh, mix those colors. Since I'm using blue in this green anyways, I want to mix a gray that has more of a blue tint to it. That means I go with Payne's gray. There we go. Okay, so now we need the center of these. I'm going to try with a little bit of this burnt umber. I'm going to make this fairly thick. I do have a little bit of that gray left over. Oh, that's hard stuff. That's hard stuff. These are, for the most part, Winsor Newton paints. Winsor Newton paints are very, they dry so hard. Um, I'm looking at these. This one might be okay. These ones are, are definitely not ready. So what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of really, of cleaning my brush, my larger brush. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of this. Good enough. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of a brighter green. I'll put some of this raw umber in it. Nice and watery. So I want to give a few more stalks and strands of things just here and there. You know, these these are out in the field and uh, you know, there's more than just these things growing there. So we want to give it a lot of life with enough stalks of grasses that are out here. By the time you put a few of these in, and they should be going all different directions here. By the time you put a few of these in in different directions, they're all going to look right. So if you forget to put one in here that doesn't connect to one down there, it's not going to matter all that much. Uh, because we're going to have uh, enough of them in there, it's going to keep your eye distracted from seeing any one specific of those. I'm going to come back in and brighten up our poppy color inside these couple here. It's got a little dull by putting the, the green in there. It ran a little bit, so we brighten that up just a bit. That might help out. And I am going to go ahead and try to do this with... Oh, here we go with a little bit of this, uh, what am I using, burnt umber here, just to put the center in here. It doesn't have to be super perfect, just has to be enough. And then I think what I'm going to do... If I can do this, I haven't done this in a long time either, so I'm going to grab uh, a palette knife. I'm going to turn it on edge. I'm just going to try to oh, see if I can do this. Pull a little bit out of there. It should pull up just a little bit of that paint and make it look a little bit hairy in there. I think that's not too bad. Uh, let's see, I kind of like that. Uh, I could go back and do a little bit more, but I think it would be futzing with it. I don't want to I don't want to mess with the freeness that this painting has right there. I think I'm going to stop there and call it good. I'll just sign it right here. 
perfect. I hope you enjoyed seeing me paint some poppies. Here's my inspiration photo and the one I came up with. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Stop by and see me. I'm trying to do a live video every Saturday. Hope to see you there. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.